To see me, I am sure, to find out who I have assigned to the Johnny Tanuri man. You love Chico too, didn't you, Vincenzo? Love is not the word, my Don. Worship. You didn't think he was stupid, incompetent, a stumbling block in the organization? Well, no. I bring this up because I received this letter. Very disturbing letter. What is this letter about, my Don? You. Me? Who's it from? It's from Anonymous. Walk with me. Listen to what Anonymous has to say. This is to inform you that Johnny Zanuti did not bump off your son. To find a real killer, look no further than Vincent, your new right-hand man. Vincent arranged a frame-up by luring the unsuspecting stooge Tanuti to a restaurant where Chico's hit would take place by promising him a date with a woman of redundant breast size. Vincent said he was to meet this woman himself, but it was his anniversary. The chipper. Well, what do you got to say about this? I'm a dead man. I mean, if it's true, I mean, if, if I had a date with another woman on my anniversary, Angela would kill me. <laughs> she would. Don Rosselli, you, you, you must believe me. You must believe me. These are lies, Don Rosselli. You are being deceived by, by the anonymous tipster. Am I? On my mother's eyes, Don Rosselli, please, please, may I see that letter that defames me so? I know this handwriting. Look, Don Rosselli, look. This matches exactly the handwriting on the letters we get from Aunt Tanuti's mailbox. You can't believe this. This is written by Johnny Tanuti. I knew it all along. Boy, we really had him going. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had such a laugh since my son died. <laughs> Get the handwriting of a six-year-old.
look at that. Here's all the guys for my money. Here's the one, the two, the five, and the all four eyes. I don't recognize it all. Well, maybe it says something about him in here. Old country, huh? You know, this must be the place where they make all our dough. Oh, will you look at that? Oh, oh snakes like a bloody open sore. from next door. We need, we need a word with you out here, Boyle. What about? When's the last time you emptied your black water tank? Black water what? Unless it's tank connected to your toilet. Surely you must know about that. Well, all I know is that I've been flushing it. Well, where do you think it goes? I don't know. It just goes away. Speaking of which, maybe you leprechauns want to follow suit. All of them has a four-law midget. Get out here and put up your two. I'll have your guts for garter. Excuse me, boys. Excuse me. Maybe I'd have better luck talking to him. Sir? Hi. Seems like maybe you haven't had a whole lot of experience with an RV. Yeah, my uh, main boy, so to speak. Oh, well, that's okay. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We were all maidens once. Uh, so to speak. Could you open this door? This screen makes it seem like I'm taking confession or something. How do you do? How do you do? I'll show you what to do. Follow me. Anywhere. To the septic bilge. Oh. Pardon me. Excuse me. Excuse me, big fella. I'm with her. Who does he think he is? I don't know. I'll spool his neck like a fire hose if he tries to move in on my girl. What do you mean, your girl? Yeah, I like her too. How long have you been on the road? Why? Well, a rig like this has a 30-gallon sewage capacity. Maybe another 25 on the gray water. You really ought to check it every week or so under normal usage. Unless you're on a pad with hookups, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. This here's your electric, your water valve, and your outlet hose. Let me ask you something. How come such a beautiful woman like yourself knows about all this stuff? Well, because she didn't really have much of a choice. You see, I woke up one morning and my boyfriend had just driven off in our truck. Left me stuck here. Unhitched. Unhitched, huh? Mm. I guess it means that you gotta stay here, right? Well, the manager said that he would let me work off the slot fee. Oh, <laughs> nice guy. So I had to learn my way around the RV. Uh, speaking of which, you attach your outlet house right here to the black water valve. You mean this thing right here? That's the one. Sorry. I didn't catch your name. Valerie. Oh, Johnny. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm, I'm real sorry you're getting dumped on that way there, uh, Valerie. That's okay. It's the story of my life. The truth is, Valerie, I'm fiercely in love with you. And when my trip to the States is over, I'd like you to come home to Ireland with me. I mean, of course, as my wife. Look, Tipper, 
I'm going to tell you the same thing I told both of your brothers. I'm looking for a man with the means to take me out of this trailer park and put me in a cul-de-sac on a street where everyone's got a 30-year mortgage, kids, a van, golden retrievers, and a satellite dish, and roofs with little white rocks on them. It's a beautiful dream, Valerie. Do you think you'll ever find it? Well, maybe not. But I can always dream. Hi ho! I thought it was howdy do. Well, I decided to drop all that cornball stuff. It really isn't me. It's not. No, you know this whole thing just serves me right. This whole stupid experiment of mine. What do you mean? Well, I decided to go traveling around in one of these laboratories on wheels. I thought it would do me some good to see if I had any commonality with the common man. But as you can see, Barry, this really isn't my cup of tea at all. Yeah, well, you didn't really seem like the RV type. No, no. Actually, I should be back at the big board doing what I do best. Liquidating municipals, levitating buyouts, that, that sort of thing. You're in the stock market? Yes, I, I dabble. Well, dabbling must be very rewarding. You know, one would think that, Valerie. Pockets are filled with gold, but... <sighs> the heart is empty. I am so sorry. Well, listen to me going on about my petty problems when you have big problems of your own. I mean, you being unhitched and everything. I mean, what kind of, what kind of skunk just gets up and leaves a woman? A, a beautiful, sweet woman, I might add, out of here in the middle of nowhere with absolutely no resources whatsoever. Well, I really shouldn't be so hard on Greg. You see, we met at the auto plant. He was working vinyl and I was working plush. And when the plant closed down, Greg felt that we should go look for work in another state. In this thing. No luck, huh? Well, we heard there was some work in Rapid City, but Greg just freaked out. He felt that a vinyl man had no business working at Reptile Gardens. You know, Valerie, you're a very brave girl making a go at it by yourself. Actually, I'm not by myself. And for Greg, that was the problem. What problem is that? My son, Ricky. Your son? Mm-hmm. Hey, Schnook. How'd you like your shower? You! Ricky! <laughs> what are you doing in here, you little son of a... Very nice lady who lives next door. Ricky, you have no business being in here. This belongs to Mr. Bagel. Oh, Mr. Bagel, huh? Well, then why does everything in here say Hick Benson? Hick was my uncle. He was my very wealthy uncle. He left me everything after he passed away. Passed away? Or did you kill him? That is enough, young man. I am so sorry. But I've tried. You just don't know how difficult it is raising a son without having a father around. <laughs> oh, no, that's quite all right. I, too, was an incorrigible delinquent when I was his age. But, of course, I went on to make something of myself. Yeah, and it stinks. Ricky! I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna find out. My mom's been with enough losers, and, uh, that's my loser. Excuse me. He's priceless.
It's me, Vic. Vic the Pick. Vic the Pick. My God, they must be delousing New York. I choose to ignore that. How'd you find me? It's easy. I'm all in your freaking wanted posters. What are you doing here? I'm doing a thing for a guy. They sent you to kill Johnny. You must put it that way. <sighs> Beverly, what's happened to you? Your clothes, your hair, your whole department. I don't know, Vic. I don't know. Come with me. We get to talk. Vic, you know I can't be seen with scum like you. I'm a police officer. <sighs> Beverly. I'm gonna have to save you from yourself. Propane spilled. You're all leveled on the pad, and I blocked the wheels. Hey, look, buddy. Really, that's enough already. You don't have to do this all for me. I want to. Uh, n n now what are you doing? It's your TV cable hookup. My, my cable hookup? Uh-huh. Uh, th doesn't that cost extra? It's just ten dollars. Oh. Why should you worry? Money's no object with you. No, 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 of course not. No, no object at all. This isn't your property. I was just trying to find the stock market report, Ma. I thought uh, Mr. Bago might want to see how all his companies are doing. Wouldn't you, Mr. Bago? Yes, that's a capital idea, young man. Excellent idea. Let's see here. Hmm, very good. Up, up, up. Which company is yours? Uh, the Unst there. It's at 43. That's very good. What's Unst stand for? Universal chained an edifice. Wow. You must lead such an interesting life. So much different than what I'm used to here at the RV park. Really? Hmm. I never get a chance to talk to somebody like you. You see, the most you hear around here is who needs a valve job? Who needs their sewer sludge pumped? Who needs their fire ring re rocked? Where to get prunes? <laughs> Listen, I'm sure that you must have something fascinating to do tonight, but would you like to join me for dinner? Well, I don't think I have any previous entanglements. Good. I just have a financial question to ask you, if you don't mind, Mr. Bego. I guess it's okay. Well, then that'll give me a moment to freshen up then. What is it? What is it? Get it off your chest. Okay. Here it is. Unch doesn't stand for universal chain and whatever crap you made up. It stands for unchanged. It means the stock is at the same price it started at. Now, any idiot who got past the third grade knows that. Hey, did I cop an Ivy League education? I only testified. I mean, I only said that I was rich, okay? You know, Rich, you're full of bull. Just like all the rest of the guys I chased away from my mom. Got a built-in bull meter, and you're full of bull, Mr. Bogus. I mean, Bago. All right, kid. You got me. I'd like to tell you the truth, but, uh... I don't think you can handle it. Try me. I just did a little stretch in prison. Prison? I knew it. I knew it. While I was there, I was sharing a cell with a murderer. Murderer? Cool. And you see, this guy would talk in his sleep. And one night, I was up late, musing myself, that sort of thing, you know, thinking about life. This guy starts yabbering about... Some abandoned gold mine. Seems like it killed some guy over it because it was still full of gold. How full are we talking? <laughs> Millions! Uh, how much does gold go for these days? 365 bucks an ounce of the clothes. I, I just saw it on TV. There you have it. Billions, maybe. Anyhow, this, uh, this guy, Eddie, starts uh, tossing and turning in his sleep, and the guy's worried. And he's worried because after all the trouble he went through killing this guy, it seems like somebody else might have beat him too because... <laughs> 
Uh, what, what am I? Don't. What am I telling you this for? You, your mom's expecting me for dinner. I... Yeah. She's not expecting to hear that you just got out of the slammer. I'd hate to have to tell her that. Now wait a second. You wouldn't do that to me, would you, kid? Not if you finish that story. Well, since you put it that way. You see, what Eddie was worried about was that abandoned gold mine he was talking about. It was right here on the cover of the frickin' brochure. The one that they hand out to over 100,000 idiots that come out here every year. I mean, anybody could find it. I got one of those. Exactly. I'll tell you what. Tomorrow, maybe me and you will do a little poking around and see what we can find, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay, bye. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You wouldn't be thinking about going out there on your own and beat me to it because uh, I got a bull meter of my own, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Well, where are you going? I'm just going to go play. All right, have a good time. Hi-ho, Johnny. Well, hi-ho. Listen, a uh, small token of my appreciation. I was a little short on wine, so, uh... Hmm. 10W40 high-performance motor oil? Yeah, they say it's the best. I'm pretty sure of that, because I think I own a company. Well, I'm gonna save it for a very special occasion. Like, sometime when I have a car. I thought Ricky was with you. No, he's out playing somewhere. Listen, why don't we just enjoy this moment together, alone, while we can, okay? Down. Nobody's gonna take it away from you. I haven't had a decent meal in 43 days. Imagine. 43 days sleeping in the back of that canine wagon. When them German shepherds probably peed and done who knows what. I'm eating here. So tell me, why are you doing this to yourself? Why you let that worm Johnny Tenuti make you suffer like this? I'll pay him back in spades. I'm gonna find him, and I'm gonna take him back to New York, and nobody's gonna stop me. Not you or any of the other goombas Roselli sends out. Take him back to New York. You have my blessing. All I'm suggesting is you let me kill him first. May I? You see how well we work together? What do you say we track Johnny Tenuti together? You and me, a team. Scratchy, scratchy. Johnny, I hope you don't mind, but I have to ask. Is there a... Mrs. Bago. Only if someday if she'll have me. You know, Valerie, we haven't known each other for a very long time, but I just want to let you know how fond I am of you. Johnny, I want to be honest with you. I'm looking for someone in my life who's prepared to take care of me. And I want to be honest with you. You deserve to be taken care of. Well, not just me. Ricky, too. Oh, whoa. Well, Ricky, too. Especially Ricky. You see, he needs so desperately to have a man around. And yet every time there is one around, well, he just acts up. Please, don't be put off by him. Well, I'm trying not to. You know, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about him. I wonder where he could be. Listen, Valerie, let's not worry about Ricky right now. Let's just think about us. Okay. Valerie! Yes? It's me, Tipper. 
Ah, oh, let me take care of it. Listen, pal, I don't know what they call it out in Ireland in this particular situation, but over here, we call it first come, first served. You get that? Look over in Ireland, we have an expression too. It goes like this. Get out of my way or I'll blow up your car. Tipper. Pal, brace yourself. Your son's had an accident. Oh my God, is he all right? Look, he seems to be. We just can't be sure. He's fallen down one of those old abandoned mine shafts. What, what was he doing over there? <laughs> Where's my son? <laughs> oh my God! Is he? No, Mom. It's the pipes. They always do it to me. <laughs> Ricky? Honey, you all right? Mommy, get me out of here, please. I'm scared, Mommy. Oh, it's okay, baby. Don't cry. You're gonna be okay. Somebody do something! You put your mind at ease, Valerie. Now you're going to see the advantage of having a Tipper Donovan around. Mommy! Tipper, hurry, please. Yeah. Hurry, Tipper. Uh, 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 whoa, boy. This old tighter than a dead marshal's grip on a hairpenny. Hey, I'm sorry, ma'am. But we Donovan seem to be a bit too raw bone for the task. Out the way! What? Johnny, do you think you could get down that hole and rescue Ricky? You mean down a dark, narrow, cramped little hole? How about it, Robbie? I, you're slightly built. What's that supposed to mean? I'm effeminate or something? Mommy, hurry! I'll get the police. Don't wait a minute. There's no need to panic. I think we can take care of this little problem without any outside help. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Thank you. In case he has dehydration. In case he has hypothermia. Yes, I gotta put him out of his misery. Here, catch. Ah! Well, on the plus side, he couldn't have got down there any faster. Are you okay, Mr. Bego? No, I don't know if you're okay. Do I freaking look okay? Uh, He's okay. Uh. Uh. It's just a dead guy. So, I guess this isn't the way you planned it, huh? What are you talking about? You falling down the hole? It's just supposed to be me, right? No, nobody was supposed to fall down any hole. I just wanted to get rid of you for a little while. Yeah, so you could swap spit with my mom. Hey, hey, you keep talking like that, I'm gonna shine this flashlight where the flashlight don't shine. Are you dead? Hey, you wish. If you ain't a freaking angel, then why is there a golden halo over your head? I got it in my hands, too. Oh, my, my. Oh, my, my. Yokohama, there's gold on these walls! I'm rich! I'm rich! What are you talking about? I'm rich. I, I spotted it. Uh-uh, no, I got here first. You, you were just following me. Jump in my claim. I think they call it on Lone Ranger reruns. Wait, you little... If I didn't come down here to save your butt, you would have never known it was here. You probably would have died. I want to remind you, that's still a possibility. Can you reach the rope? Yeah! One of us can. By the way, Beverly, this room ain't mine, you know. Whose is it? It's yours. All you gotta do is share a little information with me. Color TV. Roaring fire. King size bed. They got a nice big bubble bath in there. You know? With those cheap thrill jets. What do you wanna know? 
Just give me a good faith tidbit. Make me feel better. He uses an alias. Calls himself Johnny Bago. Johnny Bago. See how easy Scratchy Scratchy is? Any goon with a teaspoon of brains would know his alias by now. I'm hardly selling out. Of course not. Not for a few bath oil beads and some surf and turf. I give you more credit than that. Have to be for the hundred large reward Don Roselli put on Johnny's head. A hundred thousand dollars? Divided by two, of course. Now I'll be right in there. In case there's anything else you want to share with your new partner. Anything at all. Let's just wrap up negotiations so we can both get out of here, okay? No. If you want to negotiate in good faith, you got to put something on the table. That's it. Okay. 25%, okay? That's 25 freaking percent. That's out of the goodness of my own heart, okay? That's my final offer. Uh, you can stuff your final offer. Did I mention to you that they got spiders down here the size of grapefruits? I love spiders. I really love spiders. I almost had a tarantula as a pet. Vegas. Stop thinking about yourself for a minute, okay? Think about your mother, who's up there all by herself. She's worried sick about you. She's got no one to talk to. Who's that camera? Brewer, we need you down to the left. This is Bob Burroughs reporting live for Channel 14 News. We have a drama unfolding here beneath the gaze of Lincoln, Washington, Jefferson, and Roosevelt. Behind me, actually to my right, and rescue is going underway to save the life of an eight-year-old boy, a one Ricky Carlson, Carlson with a C, Ricky with an R. Young Carlson has fallen down an abandoned mine shaft. To compound the tragedy, the would-be tragedy, an unidentified man has also been trapped inside trying to save the life of the boy. We are working right now on getting the name of this hero, this would-be hero. Tight off here first, tight off first. Easy, tight off here, boy. Okay, I've just spoken to the leader of the rescue unit here, one... Yeah. Well, actually, I didn't get his name, but he did give me some up-to-the-moment information. Now, I'm going to lower the volume of my voice so the mother of the child doesn't hear what I'm about to say. This mine shaft, this shaft in a mine, is over 100 years old. As a result, time and rotting timber have made a caved-in likely to happen at any moment. Perhaps, mercifully, the twosome inside is just unaware of how desperate a situation they are really in. Hey, you know, the sound treatment may work with your mother, but it don't faze me one bit. I mean, you're talking to a guy who spent six months in solitary confinement. I'm comfortable with silence. I like it. But if you want a piece of my gold mine, you're gonna have to talk. And talk fast. Listen to me, here's the deal. 25%, okay, that's 25%. And if you're a good boy, I'll sweeten the back end with some, uh, what, firecrackers, switchblade knife? Come on, you tell me. 30%. No. 35%. No. Look, kid, you can't keep saying no. You gotta come back with something. No. I think it needs to be said that this is not just another story where we peer in on the emotion and misery of a local tragedy. No, this story has gone national. In fact, the whole world is watching along with me, Bob Burroughs, and wondering what will happen to the Good Samaritan and the sweet little boy trapped inside. Now I know why all those guys ran away from your mother. You like that thing that came out of that guy's chest in that outer space movie. Go ahead. Hate me. I can take it. When the price is right. 
Okay. 50-50. All proceeds of the Johnny Gold Digger mine will go right down the middle. What do you say? You mean all proceeds from Ricky's Golden Shaft? You negotiate like a teamster, kid. You got a deal. I gotta admit, though, you're a, you're a tough nut to crack there. I don't like your attitude. Hey, right, not so bad yourself. Yeah. You know, you kind of remind me of myself and my shin-kicking days. Not that you know a few things to learn, mind you. Well, you know, I've had no one to teach me. At least you probably had a father. Yeah. Well, it's up to a father to teach his son well. You know, the important things in life, like how to pull a scam or how to figure out an angle or fight dirty or clean out a gun. But I don't know why I'm telling you all this for. I mean, even if somebody does try to teach you, you're just going to chase him away anyway, like all the other guys your ma told me about. Well, don't you understand? I, I had to chase those other guys away. The kind of guys my mom picks are all brain dead, and she only hooks up with them because she thinks I need some kind of male influence in my life. The fact is, my mom's got to learn to be independent. And if we only had the dough, which it looks like we're going to have, we'd be just fine on our own. So I guess there doesn't seem to be much room in this little circle for the odd man out, huh? You're not the odd man out. My partner. Really? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, partner. Let's get out of this rat hole. Yeah. Okay. Now listen, when you get up there, don't tell those three shillelies. Nothing about our little strike here. You understand okay. me? Keep yeah. real quiet about this. We're going to get our claim recorded nice and proper. I hear you. Okay, because you take it from your Uncle Johnny. But people can't con out of you, they're going to steal. And what they can't steal They'll out of you... They'll stab you in the back for I swear you're like the illegitimate son I never had. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pull him up! I'll see you later, Rico, okay? See you poolside, partner. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to find a few nuggets. Ricky, you hurt? Ricky, Ricky. Ricky. how you feeling, Rick? Have you thought about doing, doing a movie of your ordeal? Movie? Movie? I want to see my son. I want to see my son. Everyone at Channel 14 has thrilled you're alive, Ricky. Now our thoughts turn to the brave man still fighting for his life down below. Ricky, what can you tell us about your hero? Well, all I can say is, God bless Johnny Bagel. Was it Bagel? No, it's Johnny Bagel. What's the matter down there? We can hardly lift you. I thought you guys were supposed to be so raw, Bone. Okay, try it now. Plops here in this place where we hallow great Americans. The hero of the moment is one John Bago. Partners, huh? Scratchy, scratchy. When are you gonna learn, Beverly? When are you gonna freaking learn? Oh, Ricky, I, I prayed to God if only he'd let me have you back. I wouldn't make you take your hyperactive medicine anymore. Forget about that, Ma. I gotta tell you about me and Johnny. We're rich. Well, I know Johnny's rich, honey. I just hope he's okay. No, Ma, he's okay. But he's not rich. Well, at least he wasn't rich. See, he just did a five-year stretch in the joint. But he's rich not. We discovered gold down there, Ma. There's tons of it. You're rich. 
Oh, Ricky, honey, you really aren't all right, are you? You did hurt yourself down there. You, you never believe anything I say. Well, of course I do. How many fingers am I holding up? Three. Good. One for each Rolls Royce we're going to have. I'll be back for you babies later. Okay, guys! Oh, oh no! Johnny, over here! Johnny! Can over you here! Tell us how it feels to be a hero, Mr. Bagel. Where are you from? Where are you afraid? Are you having an affair with the boy's mother? Ah, oh, come on, give me a break. What'd you guys saw? Oh, you all right there, boy? I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Just, just a little shy as well. Mr. Bagel, can Get you Get back, you pack of jackals. Johnny! You don't make a very good first impression. Yeah, we thought you were a tide pool cockle. Uh, but you turned us around. You're a blooming bloody hero. Well, I appreciate that, fellas, really. Hey, mister, I've been looking for you in a world where filth and scum have inexorably stained the fabric of what we in law enforcement call society. It's an honor to meet one good man. <laughs> we are in the minority, ain't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Johnny. You gave me back my son's life. Oh, it was nothing, really. Johnny, Ricky's been telling me some awfully crazy things, and I, I was just wondering, uh, did he bump his head or anything? The wrong one, he did bump his head. Smack it to a whole wall of gold. You're freaking rich! <laughs> you mean something Ricky said is actually true? Oh, you give the kid credit, let me tell you something. Our little shrimp, he's got a fake noodle. <laughs> are my dreams actually coming true? I think they are. Mr. Bago, I was wondering if I might get a final thought from you. Final thought on what? Your life. Look out, Johnny! Uh. Ah! Freeze! So long, Vic. Thanks for the surf and turf. Come on, Beldy, why can't you freaking let it go? Ah! <laughs> Hold it right there, Johnny. Hey, lady. Quiet, Rugrat. Okay, but that rope's around your foot. You think I'm gonna fall for that? That's the oldest trick in the book. All right, Johnny. Think about a blondie here. I'm taking you in! Oh. Ah. Oh. Stay right there, Johnny. Don't you move! I'm taking you back to New York! Oh, oh man. Our first mine accident... And me without liability insurance. Johnny! Wait! What do they want you for anyway? Murder. Oh, you, you didn't tell me that. No, don't be told press kid, because I didn't do it, but nobody wants to believe that. I want to believe it, Johnny. Take us with you. Oh, Valerie, I'd love to, but um, I, I can't. Come on, Ma, don't you get it? See, being on the land with Johnny, it's no place for you and me. And, and besides, you don't have to chase after anyone anymore, Ma. We're rich. We, we, we can be independent. Besides, Valerie, you already got a good man in your life. And by the way, don't mean we're not partners anymore, Johnny. We'll always be 50-50 in the Golden Shaft. Yeah, that's right, Ricky. You get the Golden and I get the shaft. <laughs> Listen, you, uh, you take care of yourself, okay? Okay, I will. And, um, uh, take care of your mom, too. Okay. Okay. Bye. At least kiss me goodbye. Johnny, the cops! Oh, man. Dear Ma, did you see me on the national news the other night? I sure hope not, because if you did, there's no telling who else did. Anyhow, I was there on TV, all right. They made a big deal out of me saving a kid's life. But as usual, those press magnets missed the big story, that me and the kid discovered a gold mine. Vic didn't say nothing about no gold mine, did he? 
It's a little late to ask him about it now, my Don. There's no telling how much that gold mine was worth. Millions, maybe hundreds of millions. Ah, what's the sense flogging myself? It won't do me no good. Anyway, Ma, I didn't leave that mine till I got a souvenir gold nugget. Biggest hunk of gold you ever seen. How big? Well, let me put it this way. It could have filled up all three of your mowers and still had enough left for the bike you spit that was giving you trouble. I thought I'd send it to you. You'll be okay, Ma, if you just stay away from that peanut brittle. I miss you terrible, Mom. I'll write you again when I get to where I'm going. Wherever the hell that is. Love, Johnny.